Hey guys, this is Doug with Fellowship of the Martyrs. Um, you might notice uh, something a little different. I uh, got my hair down uh, and uh, I got some handlebar mustache in honor of my dear friend, Brother Baron, in Springfield, Ohio. I. Uh, Baron's going through a lot right now, and I love him with all my heart. I don't know if the Lord's going to let me get out there to hang on his neck and give him a hug while he's uh, officiating over the funeral of a dear friend of his, a hermit, who was uh, the president of death. Uh, but uh, I want um, to do my own little version of... Uh, homage to Baron and let him know how much I love him and some other folks that are out there watching. Baron's known for his uh, big handlebar mustaches, so I uh, put some kind of goo in my in my beard and hung it up here. I don't think the beard's going to last much longer. I'm getting permission to cut it from the Lord, so the next few days it may go bye-bye mostly not all of it I've had a beard since I was pretty well 18 or 20 so I don't expect it to go all the way away but and uh, anyway but I um, I also want to uh, give a shout out to uh, some of the other bikers that I know that watch my videos um, especially uh, uh, one down south that's missing one leg and uh, glad to have you watching bugs and and I hope you keep watching this little train wreck of a of a video channel and and uh, see what uh, maybe something will stick Baron was telling me that uh, this funeral on Tuesday um, on his biker jacket when you're in a real club they, um, you get a bead on your jacket every time you're a pallbearer in somebody's funeral. And this will be 58 for him. Well, he's about my age, which is like middle 40s, and that's a lot of people to bury. And uh, just in the last week, he's lost about four people that are close to him, and Seems like one family member or another in the last two or two years or so, and he. Uh, I just want to share some of what I learned from Baron. Um, it may seem like I was some kind of one percent biker who swung all the way to the other side and became a crazy radical Christian, but uh, that's not that's not accurate. I was a preacher's kid, never done a drug in my life can probably count on fingers and toes the number of alcoholic drinks I've had in my life. Probably count on one hand the cigarettes I've had in my life. Uh, I, I, I was pretty well... Uh, now I rode a motorcycle. Um, for a while that was my only ride. Um, altogether, winter, rain, snow, didn't matter. And... Uh, Enjoyed it and miss it, waiting for somebody to give me another one, and uh, I'd be back out on the road. But uh, I can't say that I was a one percenter like that, outlaw type, uh, never claimed to be. But I've learned a lot from Baron, who, if there are good guys in that world, uh, he's one of them. And even when he was as bad as bad could be, he still had some sort of, you could still see the Lord working him over and putting some ethics in him and pulling him back from the brink, saving his life a whole bunch of times, and getting him out of jail and all kinds of stuff. And anyway, he's real special to me and I'm hurting right now because he's hurting. And... Um, one of the things I learned from Baron, he was a trainer of probates. Probates are the guys that are trying out to be in the gang, in the club. Um, 
as he says, there's bikers and then there's motorcycle enthusiasts. And if you're a real one percenter, uh, the baddest of the bad, the, the ones that are living the life, then you're a, a biker. Otherwise, you just like motorcycles. And if you're going to be one of those guys, then you have to probate. And uh, they go through some indefinite period of time where they have to prove themselves to the club. And it's all about loyalty. Um, they'll have them do all of the you know, crappy jobs nobody else wants to do around the clubhouse and stuff like that and and shine the older members' vice motorcycles and, and, and whatever. Um, and sometimes they'll just beat them up for fun and see how well they take it. And uh, Baron would tell stories about taking four or five probates, say, let's go down to the Hells Angels clubhouse. And they're like, we're going to get beat up. There's like 60 of them and four of us. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Let's see how you do. <laughs> and they just go and pound on each other and, and take their bruises and go home. And But if you squeal, if you quit, if you chicken out, you're done. That's it. You're done. It's all about fearlessness. It's all about not backing down. It's all about protecting your colors. Now, you get, you get your jacket. That's your rags. That's your colors. And um, you would have the name of your club on the back if you get a rocker uh, that means you're an actual member now you're welcome to correct me at some point if I get any of this wrong but because uh, I'm speaking not from personal experience by my own admission anyway <clears throat> uh, you never ever let those colors hit the ground and Baron would talk a lot and train them about you do not let your club name hit the ground. You never, ever land on your back. You never get that dirty. You never wear that jacket when you're in a car because it's for motorcyclists, not for car riders. And he would make fun of them and rip it off of them and beat them up if they pulled up to a meeting in their car wearing their rags. Anyway, He, he, he'd talk about seeing great big guys in the middle of a fight. Somebody hits them, and they're going on the way down. They would spin and land on their face just to make sure that those colors didn't hit the ground. You never, ever uh, want to see those colors get dirty. And anybody that has those colors, anywhere you are, anywhere in the country, it doesn't matter. If you don't know them from anybody, you still back them. You still come to their aid. You still stand with them. If you're in a bar and one of your club brothers is telling a story about how he has a this or a that kind of pan, head, shovel, whatever that does 300 miles an hour in second gear, and everybody says, you're lying, and he says, no, I'm not, you say, you know what, I was there, I saw it do it. And then everybody beats you up for being a liar and throws you out. But you back them up when you're out with another club, when you're in public, when you're whatever, you back them up. Then you go back to your clubhouse and you grab them by the scruff and say, don't you ever do that to me again, you lying piece of whatever, and thump them if you have to. <laughs> but you always back them up. There's just, there's a code of ethics, at least the way it used to be. It's getting less that way, Baron says. But the way it used to be, there was real rules. There was real ethics. You'd never, ever steal from a brother. You'd never, ever mess with his woman. You know, you'd respect your elders, the people that have been at it longer than you. You'd listen to them, and you'd do what they tell you or else. And if somebody gets hurt in a wreck... If somebody dies, you're there for his widow. You're there for his kid. You take up money. You have a rally. You whatever. They do far better job, a far better job than the vast majority of Christians that I know at taking care of their own. And practically everybody does a better job of taking their own, taking care of their own than the Christians. It really shouldn't be that way. There's a a group. Um, called BACA, Bikers Against Child Abuse, which is, which is just using your strengths to your advantage. 
you know, doing something with what you have that will be helpful. But they have a real passion for child abuse. So if you join BACA and somebody says, this kid's getting abused by a bully across the street or by his stepdad or whatever, then two of the biggest, scariest, most tattoo-covered, pierced, big old biker guys come up to the house, knock on the door and say, hi, we're assigned to watch out for him. And we want you to know that we're here to watch out for him. And if we hear that there's any problem with him anymore, we're going to come talk to you. And they ride by the neighborhood and they schedule times where the whole gang will just park in front of the house, whatever. And there's Christian, there's Christian biker groups that are involved. There's <coughs> all different kinds. They do Janie's Ride to raise money for, for kids. They do all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm not trying to recruit people to, 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 to certainly go into, into the one percenter biker life, e even into Christian biker groups. I'm not, that's not the point. There, there's some ways in my life where Baron has raised the bar for me and, and showed me who he is and what he believes, and how he's been trained. And I'm grateful that now that God has pulled him out of that, by and large, that they trained him far better than church would have trained him. And there's lots of others that are out there that are going to be much more useful to God, are going to be true one percenters for God. Um, and they learned it. They learned how not to back down, how not to let your colors hit the ground, how, how to back up a brother, how to be there for somebody, how not to give up, how to love. They'll greet each other with a kiss, full on the lips at funerals. Like tradition, like you pretty much gotta. You know, if I'm with you, I kiss you. <laughs> and, and that's just the way it is. <clears throat> well, that's like in the Bible. And I never see it in church. Maybe the lady's kissing on the cheek. Mm, mm, mm. But, anyway, there's ways I've raised the bar for Baron. He thought he was big, tough, extreme, radical. Then we met, and he realized he wasn't a one percenter. <laughs> and I, and I'm, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here. Baron, you're welcome to comment and back me up on this. But... We got to talking. His bar got raised. He prayed the nuclear prayer. Lord, break my legs. And the Lord broke his legs. And is, is continu <laughs> continually in the process of breaking his legs. In very creative ways, I might add, <laughs> that I could have never anticipated, nor could he. But I see him continuously getting refined and having to trust the Lord more and more. Uh, as he limps around and can barely <laughs> lift his arms over his head and the roof leaks and the cars break down and he has to trust God for everything. And uh, if he tries to help in his own power, the Lord pretty much stops it. So he, he is definitely learning um, what it means to be fully dependent on the Lord and uh, be one of this gang. <sighs> I um, I don't have much good to say about Hermit, except that he was Baron's friend. He uh, died in a single vehicle accident. Reports say he was going over 130 miles an hour, probably coked up, had been snorting Xanax for a while. And uh, a week or so before, Baron was standing there crying in front of him you got to stop this it's going to kill you you got to get out of this life you got to stop doing this it's going to be the death of you and he wouldn't listen and a week later he's dead from the exact exact things that uh, baron was trying to talk him talk to him about and it looks for all the world like this one got away like I don't know, maybe one second before the impact, 
He says, okay, God, you're right. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out someday in heaven. But this ought to be a wake-up call to lots of people. Um, 58th bead. The 58th bead on Barron's jacket. Now, he's friends with lots of people. And a lot of people asked him to be pallbearers and everything. He knows people. <coughs> I, I, I may, he, he was the first one to have a build it build it on TV chopper sh cable TV show before Jesse James and Orange County and all those other guys uh, years before Baron was was had his own cable show building choppers all through the southeast and he knows all those guys and uh, is co-producer with me on my brother's keeper the TV show we're supposed to start and and uh, I love him with all my heart I want to be there for him I, I I would I would love to get a videotape of that of his eulogy at this funeral. There's going to be bikers coming from all over the country because Hermit was a national president, and uh, they'll be riding in there for that funeral. And Barron's going to let him have it. I really believe Barron's going to let him have it with the truth. And uh, it's already affecting a lot of lives and a lot of people thinking about their mortality and. Um, it's kind of weird to see my mustache, I gotta tell you. Anyway, uh, I can see how this would be a fun hobby to play with all day. Uh, there you go. <clears throat> Baron, I love you. I'm praying for you. Pray, Lord, keep your cup full, give you all the strength you need. Keep arranging opportunities for you to bless people and be a blessing and care for the hungry. And Baron talked to all the pastors in, in uh, Springfield, Ohio, about starting a food pantry, and nobody would move. Nobody would do anything, except Hermit. said, let's have it out of the back of the death clubhouse. Let's start a food pantry. We're people too. We care about the community. Let's start a let's start a food pantry here. Now they got medical clinic and all kinds of projects that are going. Shouldn't be that hard to get Christians to act like Jesus. I shouldn't be able to look around and find anybody that is acting more like Jesus than the Christians. That has even a sliver of Okay, ethics, love. Okay, I'm not saying that people don't love. I'm not saying that atheists don't love their kids. I'm not saying whatever. But but if there's anybody even close, even close to the kind of dedication and self-sacrifice that the Christians have, we're doing it wrong. So, brethren, I love you praying for you. Got to go check out our website, fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. And uh, go do something. Go do something in your community. Go love somebody. S step it up a little bit. See if you can't be a one percenter. Go wash somebody's feet. Love somebody more. God bless you. Oh, I'm going to cut the beard soon. Uh, the 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 ponytail is probably going to stay for a while. I, well, I hope not, but but probably for a while. But uh, bugs, I love you. I hope you'll still watch, even if I even if I cut the beard and and I'm not uh, quite so scary. Thanks. <laughs>